Six devs make a game but no communication is allowed. This is the Pass the Game Challenge where some of the weirdest video games are brought to life. From playing as a leaping frog that uses his elastic tongue as a grapple hook to a top-down shooter that transforms into a dancing penguin arcade game. You never know what might happen. And to spice things up even further for this special edition, we've challenged each dev to spin Blackthorn Prod's Wheel of Doom. Whatever they land on, they'll need to incorporate into the game project. Project. You guys are not prepared for the end result in this one. So without further ado, let's get this game cooking with dev number one. Hey, I'm Ajaxter. Today, we're spinning the Wii U. We got a couple options. Hopefully we get Giant Centipede. Big money, big money, big money. Leonardo da Vinci Invention. So I've tried to make a scary horror game in the past, and it didn't really go as planned. But this time, we're gonna make it happen. Let's look at some of these inventions here. Helicopter. A tank. A 33-barreled machine gun. Hmm. I mean, I could definitely get creative, but I think I found the perfect invention. Scuba gear. I mean, just look at that. That's one of the creepiest things I've ever seen. I think it contains all the ingredients. Underwater, dark, creepy. So how do we make this? Well, first thing, we have to be able to swim. This is actually pretty easy to set up with Unity's physics system. Just attach a rigid body, turn up the drag a bit, and we're swimming. We're swimming through the air, and we must be like water, my friend. Let's start with the surface. I created a simple shader where we take two water textures, animate them in opposing directions, and then finally combine them into a single output. So now we have little waves. But we're scuba divers, and we spend our time underwater. So how do we make that? Well, there's a few things. One, obstructed vision. I shouldn't be able to see far ahead of me, so I just added some fog. Two, these little guys, which apparently is called marine snow, and is a mixture of sand, soot, dead plankton and fecal matter. Mmm, delicious. So, I created a simple dust particle system, and I think it does the job. Three bubbles. I generated this bubble sprite with Dolly 3, and I made the player breathe and shoot out particles every once in a while. Four, these little light rays, which are called caustics. I made it so when you're closer to the surface, they show up on the ground, and as you get deeper, they start to fade. I also decided to put a green filter on everything, rather than the stereotypical blue. I felt like the green was indicative of someone using night vision, because it was so dark. And I feel like it has more potential in a horror game setting. All right. Now that we have movement in water, I thought it'd be a nice touch to add swimming arms. So I took this animation from Mixamo and deleted everything but the arms. And now we have swimming arms. Last thing I did was add some sound effects to really make it feel like we were immersed underwater. And with that, we go from this to this. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. All we can do now is just hope for a horror game. Also, quick plug, I run a daily puzzle game called Zumble on iOS and Android if you're into that kind of thing. Okay, thanks, bye. Now, before we move on to dev number two, where things are going to get increasingly crazy, we want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Indie game dev is an incredibly rewarding craft, but it's also a mentally challenging one at times. With BetterHelp, you fill out a form and will match within 48 hours in most cases with a therapist who will help you navigate whatever struggle you may be dealing with right now. Be it from burnout, from overworking on your game projects, to loneliness, anxiety, and creative block, BetterHelp and your therapists are there to help you out if you need. BetterHelp makes therapy accessible and affordable. The fact that it's remote and online is a huge plus in our book. It means you can stay in close contact with your therapist no matter where you are in the world, so whether that's traveling or from the comfort of your own home. Finding the right therapist that clicks for you is extremely important and BetterHelp makes that process very smooth. Changing therapist comes at no additional cost, so you can try different ones until you find the right match. Click on the link in the description, betterhelp.com slash blackthumbprod. And with that said, let's get back to our video game project with dev number two. All right, so I only get one chance at spinning this wheel, apparently. Okay, that went for a while. Add gambling. So I haven't opened the project yet, so I'm going to do that and then see how I can implement this. There's practically nothing here. I'm getting like real uh, subnautica vibes right now. And it's just swimming around in an ocean of green. And when I go above the water, there's... I'm still swimming. 
There's a lot that I can do with nothing, I think. So to get things rolling, I added a trigger to the water and created the player's eye level to detect whether the player is above or below the water, which allowed us to disable the green effect and introduce the first mechanic. Fairly generic oxygen system for underwater diving, which when it depletes, the player will have a few seconds before actually drowning, along with this choking sound effect I made. This choking period will also give the player a slight chance to also catch their breath by resurfacing with another sound effect if successful. <gasps> As I got thinking about the gambling aspect, I came up with the idea that there were other oxygen tanks sitting at the bottom of the water that the player could swap out when they were running low, but there's a slight chance that it could be empty. But this wasn't good enough, I wanted literal gambling. So I had the idea of maybe you could catch fish and then enter them in like some sort of betting race as a tertiary gameplay loop while you explore. But setting up fish AI just seemed like way too much work, so I sat on the idea for a little bit. Focusing more on the actual primary gameplay loop, I created a grid that randomly spawns three types of resources to search for. So so far what I think is actually working about this is the atmosphere and gradually diving deeper not realizing how far you've gone under until you kind of look up and see there's a massive void while you're looking for these resources. So to add to this I use just my voice to create these sort of terrifying sound effects that play when you're swimming around randomly. hopefully catching some of the other devs off guard as well. So I hadn't quite figured out what I wanted to do with the resources yet until I was looking at these three cubes that were just here and thought, what if they were boats you could trade with for coins, but they sell at different rates. But again, it's gambling as one of the values are high and then there's a secret low value. So they can now take these coins and then use them to bet and gamble on fish races at this vendor. I also hand placed a bunch of treasure chests that give coins and another vendor that swaps all your resources into a completely random one. So between all that I think I incorporated gambling quite well, literally and thematically. And just like that I handed the project back over like an anxious parent hoping their ugly child doesn't get bullied too much. Alright if you like what I did here you can check out my YouTube channel, I have a current devlog series about a roguelike that I'm working on, or maybe you could check out one of my successful jam games with a number one rated spooky sound effects on my itch.io page. Hello and welcome to my section of this video. I've lost the footage of me spinning the wheel and my reaction so instead i'm just going to walk you guys through what i did in the project when i span the wheel uh, i got add a sweaty sumo wrestler and you can see that is the sumo wrestler it's got a nice shiny sweaty skin and if we uh, select said wrestler i put a particle system on that makes him nice and sweaty so as far as that goes mission accomplished but then i got ill I got sick and I couldn't work on the project. The week passed and obviously there's a production behind this. It had to go to the next dev. But what did I do outside of the sweaty sumo wrestler? So there was a lot of just like red boxes and untextured stuff. I managed to get this boat model off Sketchfab. Uh, I also got these boys, buoys, however you want to pronounce that. I got these for the kind of gambling system that is in place. But then below water, I got this free sort of like wet sand texture. And I think it works quite well with the core sticks from the water above. Again, Sketchfab, free chest model from them. But yeah, I, I don't know what the story is here. I guess their sumo empire fell down and they had to take up a life of pearl fishing. Yeah, again, apologies for being a disappointment, but there we have it. Game to Rocket Spring Sale. Guys, if you also want to learn how to make video games, then we're offering a 25% discount code on our course Game of Rockets for the annual spring sale. You'll learn how to make video games from scratch, from the basics of C-sharp programming and using the Unity game engine, to learning how to create beautiful game environments, character designs, and animations. In each section, we make a different game of increasing scope and complexity, leading up to making a massive zone zombie survival FPS game that we will sell on Steam. But it doesn't stop there, there's also a whole section dedicated to marketing and how to build a successful game dev YouTube channel so that you actually get sales when your game launches. The link to the course and the discount code are in the description. With that said, let's move on to the next dev. Hey, I'm Rai, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing. So my only goal for this project is to make sure that the game isn't worse once I'm done with it, which could be a difficult challenge depending on what I get from the wheel. Okay, here it goes. Something good, please. A player companion. Okay, I can do that, I think. After spinning the wheel, I spent some time playing the game in order to find the optimal way to integrate the companion into the gameplay. I might have spent the entire time gambling. Look, it's not a problem if I'm having fun. Anyway, I've come up with a few ideas for the companion, but before I get to that, I wanna make a story 
to work. I set up a pretty simple UI based on the gambling screen so that there's a little bit of cohesion between the different menus. I've added some upgrades into the store for purchase. You can get an oxygen upgrade, a speed upgrade, and an inventory upgrade. Anyway, time for the companion. Like I said, I've already got a couple of ideas on how to make the companion. I ended up deciding to go with a guy who will follow you around and point out nearby resources for you to collect. I decided to use the same model as the guy on the boat. Honestly, I just really like this model. I dropped the model into Mixamo to get it rigged, and then I downloaded some swim animations. So now the companion will just sit there swimming, looking pretty stupid. But that's fine. All I need to do is make him smart by adding some artificial intelligence, which should be pretty simple. All right, so I definitely did something wrong. It's a little scarier than what I wanted. Please leave me alone. After a little bit more work, I finally got the companion AI function. I mean, he is a little bit useless at the moment, but that's why I want him to be able to find resources for you. So I added a random chance that he will dive down to a nearby resource. What I didn't realize is that this kind of just causes him to disappear behind you. So to fix that problem, I just use an asset from the asset store to add a pointer that will point directly at the resource once the companion finds it. And with that, the companion is pretty much complete, which means that I have time to add one more thing to the game. And there are still a few important features that the game needs, like a main menu, a proper end to the day, maybe a save system. I decided to add sharks because they're cool. And since I'll need a shark model, I'll get to properly show off my masterful 3D modeling skills that I've spent years perfecting. So what do you think? I think he looks pretty scary. I brought the shark into the game, but then I made a horrifying realization. There's already a slightly better shark model in the project, so I guess I should just use that one, which means I need to get rid of my shark model. Goodbye, shark. I'm sorry. After recovering from my devastating loss, I got to work on the shark's AI, which shockingly turned out pretty well if I was trying to make flying sharks. So I made some changes and now it works properly. I also added some health to the player so that the shark can chase you down and kill you. And with that complete, I think the shark is pretty much done. Oh yeah, I did also add my shark to the game. I wanted to add a second shark, but you know, I can't reuse the old model. So this was the only solution. This was not a biased decision. And that's my time done on the project. I think I have successfully achieved my goal of not making the game worse. I didn't really do much to make it better, but it's not worse. So I'm happy. What's up? My name is Michael, also known as Bite of Michael. I make game dev, computer science, productivity, career advice type videos on YouTube, all while working on my indie roguelike card game called Castlemancer. Oh, okay. I got the one thing I don't know what that is. So I have to add a Wendigo? One small problem is I don't really know what a Wendigo is. So that's the first step. Turns out a Wendigo is a supernatural being belonging to the spiritual traditions of the Algonquin speaking First Nations in North America. And it seems like they are sort of illustrated as a skeletal deer type of creature. So this should make for uh, an interesting addition. Now a mythical deer like creature is going to be a little little bit challenging to add to a scuba game, but here's what I kind of went with. First, I literally have no idea how to 3D model as all of my game dev projects have been in 2D, and trying to make an intricate mythical creature as my first model might take me too much time for the restrictions of this project. So I got this low poly Wendigo model from the Unity Asset Store to hopefully try to fit the visual aesthetic of the game as much as possible. Now making it swim I thought would look kind of goofy and I was getting a more ominous vibe from the other devs. So I edited the model just to be the top half and added sort of a miasma type of cloud towards the bottom half. I was trying to lean to more of a evil god type of character that slowly hunts you throughout the game. So I used the resource system that was built by a previous dev to add an additional type of resource called offerings. Offerings always sell higher than the other resources, but when you sell them, the Wendigo God type character gets 1% faster. The Wendigo starts off ominously in the sky and very slowly moves towards the player. I also made it so that the head of the Wendigo is always staring directly at the player, which makes it feel a bit more unsettling. And if it reaches you, you instantly die. But I thought it was kind of an interesting add to the gameplay loop as it's kind of a risk first reward type scenario, or basically like how greedy do you want to be? Some other quality of life additions I made to the game was being able to select how many resources you could sell. Before, you would automatically sell all of your current resources to the trader. With this whole new offering system, that didn't seem totally fair, so I created an interface where you can specifically choose how much of one resource you want to sell to which trader. Throughout the testing of this Wendigo implementation, I kept getting absolutely wrecked by this shark and had no way of defeating it. But instead of adding combat, which didn't feel like totally fitting the theme of the game, I added shark repellent to the upgrade store, which you can apply so that the shark will just avoid you while you have 
have it up. I also updated the interface for the upgrades to give it a bit more polish, and I also added a pretty basic main menu as an entry to the game, and the ability to quit the game when you die instead of just having to alt F4. Big thanks to Blackthorn Prod for the invite to this Pass the Game Challenge, and consider checking out my YouTube channel at Bite of Michael if you like game dev and tech, and wishlist my game Castlemancer over on Steam if you like roguelike deck builders. Thanks, and see you later. Did I do something wrong? Well, I guess stop it. Oh! Oh, this thing's slowing down. Adam Megalodon, hey Maxi. <laughs> Whoa, into the deep. Hey. Oh, perfect. Makes sense, a Megalodon. All right, everybody. Uh, Orion here. First things first, of course, me, JT, Demon Zataka, go in, make a game design document. We try to figure out what we have in the project, what we could expand on, what we could fix, and uh, what elements we need to create. We found a bunch of bugs, of course, that we needed to fix. Don't blame the other developers. That's just part of game development. And then that's our job to come in and polish everything. We felt like the environment was too sparse, fairly empty. So one of the biggest priorities we had was recreating the environment. Just really bring the game together and try to take all the these disparate parts from the challenge and turn them into one cohesive product. The biggest part that you're going to notice is we created a narrative because we wanted to figure out why is there a Wendigo, why is there a shark, and why is there a sumo wrestler in the middle of nowhere. We took a note from the other developers and ended up going through Poly.Pizza to find a bunch of models. I ended up finding some free shaders like this uh, Vertex shaders used Sebastian Legs Boyds to create fish. Um, very cool, great way to populate. I also asked the developer of Abza what they ended up doing and they did basically the same thing. GPU instance fish with Boyds. We have this cool uh, Megalodon statue. We ended up changing some of the game mechanics because they didn't really mesh together and we ended up turning the game more into sort of a survival into progressing a narrative game. So the win state is through completing one of the three characters narratives, the sumo wrestler, the Megalodon or the Wendigo. We couldn't narratively justify multiple sumo wrestlers, so we ended up adjusting the shot mechanic and just keeping the one sumo wrestler. However, we did not remove fish gambling. In fact, we improved it. We had a lot of fun working on the environment. Brand new skybox. There's rain. Uh, I tried to optimize it as much as possible. This is Ink. Ink is a scripting language. It's sort of akin to something like a JavaScript, and it's for narrative scripting. Absolutely free plugin for Unity and for a lot of major engines. So I'm not going to spoil the story too much, but I wanted to show you that. I ended up having to program a dialogue dialogue system. We redid the UI, not just UI here is beautiful. We have this uh, brand new aesthetic. There's a day night cycle. I did not end up keeping the sort of like murder after five minutes thing. We just weren't able to find a way to work it in that that worked really well for us. So we can talk to Mr. Koyo. There's branching dialogues here. I just want to also shout out our company, which we started this year, Constellation Creative. We're developing Untitled Class Game. We're going to link our Discord down in the description where we'll be posting updates for the game over the course of the year and hopefully releasing an early access later this year. We're getting pretty close to a demo. So definitely check us out and enjoy the game. Wow. I love that. That sky is really awesome. I'm liking what I'm seeing environment wise. I'm liking the style of the UI. I'm proud of the story that JT wrote, especially in the time frame, but I wish we had time to put like voice lines and stuff in there, make it, you know, the dial reading the dialogue a little more juicy and engaging. But. Well, honestly, it was sick. I remember like I, I, when I spun the wheel, I had to add the Wendigo and I was like, I didn't even know what that was when I had to add it. And then when I got the game build, it was like scuba and I was like, oh man, I'm like, how am I adding a Wendigo to this theme? <laughs> Like, all right, we're going to do offerings and it's going to be a god and you got to like run away. When I started up the, the build you submitted, I was like, dang, I'm like, they really pulled this together. <laughs> I'm so happy that they kept this. <laughs> it was such a stupid idea. I love the gambling. That was my favorite part. I, love I spent so much time Especially doing in that. The new, yeah, in the new build, the fish gambling, I was like, this is so good. <laughs> Come on. Come on! I wanted to use the fish and like make the underwater area more alive. Looking really good. Ooh, some nice fish. Doing the Unity like resource profiling, the fish take up the most resources in the game. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, the ambiance is just so much better. So much better than when I passed it off. It actually it actually feels like a proper game. I think the thing that got my attention the most was the fish gambling and like that there could be mini games all around the area, not just in the first little concentrated spot. What can I do for you, lad? I like how the Japanese sumo wrestler is Scottish. You failed her. What the f 
in the original map, there was more of like a shallower area in the middle of the boat. So there was more of an incline going down, which kind of encouraged the player to go down, come back to the boat. And I saw there was an upgrade system. So even if there was just like more raised in the middle where the boat was, then like it would encourage the player to just get some bits, come back, look further, keep going out. So just yeah. like a small incline to like some more deeper areas might help with the loop a little bit more, I think. I like the atmosphere, how that's carried forward. I like these UI elements. They're really awesome. I like all this um, environment detail, this under water stuff all the ships that they've dropped blue balls look at that blue <laughs> balls okay i mean overall i think the game turned out like actually pretty well to be honest i mean the store is looking good the fish derby is looking good honestly the whole like talking is looking really good i would probably keep working more on the sharks when i added mm. them in i was kind of thinking of adding in some sort of way to fight them like maybe you went to the shop and you get a harpoon and just mm. because the sharks they're a threat but they're not a massive threat you can kind of just swim away from them so maybe making them more dangerous adding in yeah. some ways to counteract them a little bit i thought that could be pretty fun thanks so much for watching guys crazy new videos and challenges are in the making so make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It's a huge support. And remember to check out the Game Dev Rockets. We're doing a massive spring sale. You get 25% off and it's only available for the next two weeks. Thanks again, guys. Stay tuned. Cheers.